a reminder that this meeting is being recorded to the web and should be shown on Amherst Media um, and broadcasted on the Town of Amherst YouTube channel. Okay, thank you, Melissa. Uh, welcome everyone. Uh, the, I'm the, calling the meeting of the Finance Committee to order on November 8th. Um, we have a very uh, large agenda to get through this, this morning. Uh, so um, I hope to keep going or move things forward um, quickly. Um, as uh, Melissa noted, this is a remote only uh, meeting. Uh, you can uh, you can uh, may attend virtually via Zoom or by calling in and the numbers should be on the web. If, if anyone needs help getting on, uh, let us know and we'll, we'll get you into the meeting. Um, first thing, I just wanna make sure everyone can hear me, everyone on the committee can hear me and can be heard. So I will go around. Andy? Yes, I'm here. Uh, Kathy? Yes. Alicia? Here. Bernie? Yep. Okay, and uh, Mandy Johanneke is going to join us late. Uh, she mentioned um, Matt uh, Hollander has a conflict, and I have not heard from Tom, but I thought Tom could 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 get to the meeting. So we'll just go ahead and start. Um, and um, as uh, per our um, our usual procedure, we'll start with public comment. Uh, if anyone in the, anyone in the attendees uh, wishes to um, make a public comment, uh, please raise your hand. Um, I have uh, one person or group with the East Hampton Room, room, room One. Uh, and there's two people now. So, uh, Melissa, do you want to let the first person in? This is East Hampton Room One. Sure. Go ahead. Can, can you, you uh, can I, you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, can you please identify yeah. yourself and no, tell I, us? What? Yes, I can. I'm sorry. Because of the settings, I can't seem to change my name currently or turn on my video. So I don't know why that is. Um, my name is Michelle Prindle. I am a resident of Amherst. I live in South Amherst and I have two children currently in the public school system. And I'm calling today to express my concern about the appropriation of the subs, um, the surplus cash. Um, I see that it's been being allocated to public works equipment, which we seem to be buying every single year here in Amherst, and also a waste hauler study, which I think is completely unnecessary when you look at the fact that our schools are facing a $3 million deficit this year. The regional school district with the middle school and the high school, I have a student at the high school, and also our elementary schools. And, you know, with the state of the world right now, and obviously with the results of this most recent election, it's very clear that nationally deprioritizing education has been a problem, particularly with our young men, and that there is an empathy gap that is very large. And if we cannot continue to fund our schools so that they provide a robust education and social and emotional support, that's an extreme concern for parents in this district. And so I'd like to ask you to really slow down slow down your process and really think about these schools before you allocate those surplus funds because our students deserve better and they deserve better than a waste hauler study in this town. We need to keep our teachers paid. We need to keep our schools well-funded and we need to prioritize education so that people have empathy and compassion for each other and learn about history and have access to quality literature and federal funding to education may be slashed in this new presidential administration. So I really urge you to consider fully funding our schools before you make other decisions. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Um, Alex Lopez, could you please bring Alex in? And uh, Melissa, let's uh, limit people to three minutes, please. Could you bring Alex Lopez in? Yes. Go ahead, sir. Great. Uh, so my name is Alex Lopez, um, also a resident of South Amherst, uh, also parent to 
three small folk at Crocker Farm um, who were going to be in this district for a while. And I am really just concerned uh, that we're developing a pattern. Um, this is not the first time we've had a conversation about a surplus um, and then had to advocate for the school district uh, to be the recipient thereof. Um, and given that we live in an area that is so heavily predicated upon the importance of education, um, that is so reliant upon the importance of education, um, I'm curious what this finance committee's plan is to actually uh, start addressing this pattern of us constantly having to beg, borrow, and steal in order to fund our schools um, and the next wave of tuition payers, which ultimately keep this town alive. And so in a town where we are looking at the fact that 50% of the town is non-taxable uh, in terms of property income, um, or sorry, property taxes, in a town where that continues to be the case, and yet we continue to press the other half of the town to make up that deficit in order to fund the basic institutions which keep our town alive. Um, I'm wondering what this finance committee is planning to do going forward when we live in the shadow of $3 billion endowments, um, when we cannot even touch those dollars because we have more of a priority towards the propriety of the way that the system is currently not working for our students. And I'm wondering when we are finally going to question and otherwise change a funding model that continues to put our students last um, instead of actually investing in the future of this town as something more than just a way station for tuition payers to come and go. Uh, thank you for your comment. Um, could you please, Melissa, could you please bring uh, David Astrid in or Astrid David in? Hello, um, can you hear me? Yes, sorry. I'm wonderful. My name is Astrid David. Uh, I have, um, a resident of Amherst um, for many years and I have three children in the middle school currently and I have to say I was um, I guess flabbergasted um, looking at the surplus fund um, delegation and not seeing school in there at all. The middle school building is falling apart um our there is <laughs> permanent water collection systems because of the roof um there is visible mold in the ceilings because of it um the building itself is it, the state is just awful and that is where all all of our kids are traveling through this building and i'm very uh yeah, I'm shocked to see that that there is absolutely no interest in even taking that in consideration and that there's a waste hauler survey study and a public works equipment and um and but nothing nothing for our schools. Um I I I just wanted to um, connect and just say, I think the priorities in this town are going in the wrong direction. Our students, our, our kids are our future. Those are the people that are making the decisions in the next generation. And, and we're, we're telling them, or you are telling them that they don't matter. And that the situation that our town um, is facing is, none of not of your on your priority list um i think when you drive around town and i see all these beautiful public works equipment and everything is in very good condition and i'm not saying don't fund that at all but i'm saying how can it be that in our town with our budget crisis for the schools as surplus funds there is nothing that goes into the school building 
or finding a creative way to support our education in one way or another. Um, I, I think there's, I think there's, there's a, I think there's a big problem happening if this is what our surplus funds is located to and not, and schools are being ignored. Um, I think it's, it's time to think about our future and the future of our kids. Thank you. Okay, thank you for your comment. Um, I think there's one more person, Ellen JG. Could you please bring her into the room? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Ellen Jedry Gadera. I'm a resident of South Amherst. And I have two young children that go to Crocker Farm. Um, and I'm here to echo many of the comments that have just been made. Um, it, it's pretty shocking to me that each year we've had, you know, roughly four or five million dollar surplus. And we're not seeing the schools prioritized. Um, I remember when we first came here. 2018, maybe 17. I remember going into the middle school for a play that um, my niece was in and being overcome by the smell of mold. And that was seven years ago at the middle school. And it's still a problem today. You can see it in the ceiling. You, I mean, it, it's really shocking to me. We live in a town that is made up of people connected to it, whether they're students or their teachers at UMass or Amherst College or any of our wonderful schools. But we don't, it doesn't feel like we prioritize education. And that's really the reason we moved here. That's why we bought a house here. That's why we are in Amherst. Um, I really hope that the town can look at the appropriation of the surplus and listen to all of the stakeholders out here, out there and, start to just prioritize the schools. It feels like we're just left high and dry every time. And the middle school and the high school in particular, even though I have elementary kids now, it won't be long before they're middle and high school age. And we really need the support from the town for our kids, for our future. Um, and I just hope that you can really think about priorities when it comes to thinking about the appropriation of the surplus. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your comment. Um, is there anyone else who would like to make a comment? I'm not seeing anyone. Um, Melissa, can you uh, take uh, Alex and Ellen? Uh, Alex, did you want to make another comment? Hey, Melissa, um, can you please bring Alex Lopez back in? He, he wanted to make another comment. Nope, guess not. All right, Maria. Thank you. Uh, I uh, just, I didn't hear anything that was said before this. I've just hopped in, so um, uh, sorry if I missed anything. Uh, I, I would like to know what the finance committee is planning to do to find out what the town manager and the town is believes is sufficient proof of the library trustees ability to cover what is minimally a seven million dollar current gap and could be far higher than that what is your plan uh, as the elected officials in involved in the fiscal health of this town to find that out and direct what should be the sufficient proof. Um, you know, with the results of the devastating election that just happened, empty promises and 
uh, verbal assurances are just not acceptable at this point. Um, you have to do better. You have to have real plans for not only the best case scenarios, but for when things go sideways, because things are about to go pretty sideways. Um, and that's on you guys. That's on the town council. Thank you. Thank you for your comment, Anya. Um, I don't see anyone else with their hand raised, so um, I think I'll close the comment period of a comment period. And um, we'll continue with our meeting. Um, the next item on the uh, on the agenda is a discussion of the financial indicators that we got, uh, briefing that we got last uh, Monday. Does anyone have any comments or questions they would like to raise regarding the financial indicators? Bearing in mind, everyone in the audience, bear in mind that these are very initial projections. They're not set in concrete. Andy? Yeah, I just had a couple of um, quick comments. One is um, I was uh, curious whether there's a labeling problem on 6.1 uh, the that that particular slide uh, because the uh, labeling of the um, what is sort of a reddish bar that talks it it seems to me that that should be projected um, revenue because the uh, there's revenues there's offsets and then there's the net of the two so I wanted to look at that. But my major comment actually is a point one. I think that one of the things that concerns is is it just me? But Andy's voice is cut off for yeah, me. Yeah, Andy, you, you seem to have been fro you're frozen. That worked the last time. Go ahead, Andy. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I need actually it might be uh, worth um, my just just second uh, getting to the uh, correct slide. But I think that what concerns me about the comparison to other towns on the per um, percentages um, of what happens is that we're comparing to other towns and i was looking in particular at 9.1 as i said this that don't recognize some of the things that have even been recognized already in public comment to, to some extent that we have um, a, a fairly high percentage of our um, taxation is residential and we don't have the commercial base um, and we don't have uh, the industrial base of many of the communities that show up in comparison and we also have um, a large number of tax exempt properties and um, so comparing our operating expenditures per capita and taking pride in with the implication that we should take pride in how low they are, our operating expenditures. We really would like to have greater operating expenditures, but it's not uh, uh, where we're hampered is the um, factors that I indicated before. So I really question whether that is a a uh, misleading slide um, to include in the annual presentation. So this is one year after all of the discussion we've been having that I thought it was worth pointing that out. So that's it. Yeah, I I, uh, I agree. It's always been sort of a, some people look at that and say, oh, you only spend so much per person. You know, wh why do we spend, why don't we spend more? Uh, what are we, what are we doing? Um, 
So um, I, I, I do think that that's sort of a double-edged um, statistic um, that we we need to under people we need people need to understand the underlying causes of why we spend so little per person. Um, also, how population is calculated too, which is quite a another uh, issue related to all of these things. Uh, Kathy. I, yeah, just to build on that, um, that if half our population are students and they live on property where we can't tax them, I don't know exactly how to adjust that. But if you divide it by 20,000 rather than 40,000, you would get a different picture. Um, I have a, just a couple other. I, I like these. Uh, I know we're um, particularly with a a new finance director, this is repeating the way we've always done the indicators. So I think some of these comments are also, can we make some changes? On state aid, uh, which is uh, the percent chart, the six, I think you're using state aid total rather than what you can see in 6.1, that state assessments have been going up. So I think it would be better to do net state aid, which is on um, number six, because my sense is particularly if I look at the school budgets, once we subtract off what is going to charter from what they're getting from chapter 70, it's it's an even worse picture as a share of the budget. So I it's something to consider doing since we have that statistic now in six. And you can see the the little triangle line is the dollars in 6.1. And I think if you divide it by our budget, you'd see not even adjusted for inflation that it's down as a percent. So that was a suggested way of rethinking it. I'm not sure when we do the projections. So I have a question on the projections. Um, when, and some of these comments were, uh, you got them when we were discussing this at the council meeting, you know, taking account where we do seem to be getting a higher level. So are we low on revenues? And I know we, we've now got the fourth quarter in our packet. I just looked at it this morning and you can see that there are two big pieces. One is, as is pointed out in the memo, uh, we have been underestimating, and this is not the first year, I think it's the second or third, the amount of interest revenue. Because my memory of last year, we had a big piece of surplus because interest rates were up and our reserves were up. So are we underestimating the earnings on reserves? And then there were a couple others. So I, I had a question just on the projections of actual where we can start to see what's coming in. I think we have on um, the allocation of capital, and this is segue in Bob into when we're going to have to talk about next year's budget. Also, the allocation of capital, we've had some items that have not been funded because they didn't start. And the big one is Jones Library, you know, that the anticipation was there in debt service. And so that has generated some surplus in capital. And I don't see it reflected in the fourth quarter closing. So I wasn't quite sure why, you know, that we had expected a certain amount of debt and we didn't quite get to that point. But maybe that's because the big debt wasn't until FY 25 and 26. Um, so trying to think of where is there some leeway and looking at where we are low on expenditures in FY, the closing, there has been some staff vacancies, some of which is we filled them, like we we hired a finance director. But I want to raise some questions about some other departments. So my other comment I made on Monday night, um, when we show the pie charts on how much goes to the various big sectors, uh, schools and other, there's a slice called miscellaneous that has pensions. And that is salary costs to those departments, and I don't know about retiree health, but I think keeping that separate doesn't show people how much is uh, the total cost of a person, both the fringe costs, how much we're contributing to the pension fund, and how much we're contributing to OPEB. So I don't know whether there's a way of reallocating back to some departments, because it makes it look like some things are shrinking as a share when 
part of it is the miscellaneous is increasing. Um, so trying to think of not um, giving an impression that somehow we're less and less of our dollars are going toward, you know, it looks like less is going to the town, less is going to the schools. And yes, we did increase capital. So I'm focusing on the two places where the share of new money is going and capital. There was a deliberate decision to increase the allocation over time compared to 2016 and miscellaneous is these two big items. So those are just trying to rethink the way we do the presentation, not necessarily the forecast, but the presentation. I'm, I think that there was one other chart title that when came up the other night, it could be fixed, but that's purely minutia. Thanks. Thank you, Kathy. Bernie? Yeah, um, I, I, we've gone, I think I don't, I've gone back and forth on this with a number of, in a number of venues and probably in the finance committee as well. Um, if there's any utility at all to ascribing uh, uh, pension and healthcare costs to the various departments so that um, that miscellaneous chunk would shrink. Um, it's extra work. It's not something that we'd likely... Uh, will likely show up in the final budget, but to illustrate to um, folks where the money goes, it would be helpful to do that. Uh, I don't know, I'm not, won't claim any more familiarity with the, the software we have and whether there's some magical uh, method of, of, of doing those allocations. But uh, I mean, with the exception of the regional school district, uh, the pension and retirement costs, uh, health insurance, and all that is for for everything. Or the elementary schools are, are are contained in that miscellaneous chunk, as far as I know. So so uh, it would be helpful to show people either in a pie chart or a graph or something like that, um, how those uh, th these department these areas of expenditure impact that are impacted by the those costs. Yeah, Bernie, just to just build on that point, Bob, you know, we get this in the budget books each year, too, that we only see the cost of a department, the salary side, and then there's this big thing over there called benefits. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so if you think of adding a person or, or freezing a position, the impact is more than what we're seeing, you know, and it's an un... For me, coming from looking other kind of budgets than the town budget, it's an unusual way of putting fringes in another box. So I, I I understand that it's historical. That's the way Amherst has done it. And it may be many municipals do it that way, but it it understates how much of our total costs are people. <laughs> um, okay. I, I'm not sure if if, um, if the uh, UMass, um, Uniform Massachusetts Accounting System, which is uniform only in Massachusetts, um, forces that uh, allocation that way, but um, being able to see it uh, division by division uh, would be uh, would be instructive. Yeah, I, I I've been uh, having my hand up for a while because this has been an issue that we have been dealing with in finance committees, back to the old finance committee and the town meeting days, uh, and part of the problem in uh, Melissa or um, Holly or. Jennifer might uh, be able to explain this a little bit too, but uh, you know we are captive of the Department of Revenue requirements on how things are reported, and we don't have the flexibility within our um, to report things differently because of uh, DOR. So that's why the comment was made, uh, I think, by Bernie that it requires extra work. Um, we have made the requests in prior years that um, even though it can't be a part of the, I'll pick on DPW for a second, DPW budget to say what are the health insurance and um, other um, related kinds of retiree costs that um, also go with uh, former employees and put them into the various DPW lines um, because uh, you know it, it takes a tremendous amount of work, but it is something that we have 
requested in the past and they've been attempts to do it and then they've uh, fallen by the wayside. I don't know if there's now any better methodology to do it, but it has been an ongoing issue. Yep. I don't know about Jennifer or Holly or Melissa, do you have any? Um, so, I, so I will say that the, <clears throat> we, the, the, the reporting structure of having benefits outside of the departments is something that is um, structural in Massachusetts and that all municipalities report them in these functions. Um, certainly we can, um, you know, Certainly there's interest in, in looking at how to allocate to every single person. Um, again, I don't know that we have, it, at this moment, the bandwidth or the technology in order to do that successfully. Um, you know, could that be something that we look at for for, for next year? It, it, it could be, um, but it, it's gonna take, um, to Bernie's point, a lot of work or, or some um, other assistance. I will say, what it's easier for benefits than it is for um, post retiree benefits because that that doesn't ha um, have an association necessarily with mm -hmm. an apportionment, especially when we have the unfunded liability part that's part of an actuarial study. And um, yep. we can have that actuarial study broken out by department, and we do for the enterprises, but know that every time we dig into the detail of like, well, how much of this is, um, we separate town versus um, enterprise. Um, and, um, but if we did every single department, like that, the additional cost for conducting that study would be significant. And that is not something that that actuarial something study is not something that we do internally. And I believe we are required to do it um, with an outside firm. So, um, you know, we could make some assumptions maybe um, and, and do it that way. But again, right now, um, you know, I, I don't, I can make an attempt maybe to show an additional a uh, pie chart in the um, in the budget, but you know what I mean. Like to build this forward is, um, I hear your request, and and um, you know maybe there's a way. Uh, I'm not fully sure how how to get that done at at this particular junction, and I will say that if you're going to do <clears throat> that, um, there's also the capital. You know, so some of the comments earlier in the meeting were not just about school yeah. operating budgets, but about operating uh, the school capital. And so as we invest in the, the capital of the school or the library or the DPW or the fire station, you know, do we want to allocate, like, I guess I'm asking the question uh, in order to to see how far we can get in in the progress of 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 the change that you're requesting is is to you know how you know how far do we want to go is it only in the four sectors or is it in um is it in the uh right down to the department these are my i'm just masking uh yeah. questions so that i can so that i can respond appropriately kathy yeah i was i was thinking mainly Melissa, I agree on capital. You know, we, we just need to have an X think through how much we're allocating out into the future to cap mm -hmm. to trying to say, you know, how much of it is each department. But but I thought just uh, the focus, you heard the comments on Monday night, the sense that each year we're spending less on schools or less on a big thing where part of it is the increasing pension costs and mm -hmm. I could see that OPEB the other the it's it's hard to even describe to people what that is but I can see that couldn't be allocated so I was mainly thinking of doing something simple in the initial pie charts and we later do something about how much people are as a share of everything making sure we include pensions in there because okay. I think of pensions and at one point with the budget documents, Holly came up 
I asked, could you, you give me a rough number, really rough on how much I should add, because I was used in the private sector, another 20%, 25 X percent is benefits. So rather than getting it down to the fine that every dollar, because if in health insurance, one year it's a bunch of family policies and another year it's a bunch of individual policies, it's going to vary by department. So it's easier yeah. to have overall, in addition to salary, we're spending X percent on benefits. I'm comfortable with that, but I just, okay. th I just think this pie chart at the very beginning makes it look like we're spending less on all our departments year after year. And mm -hmm. the two things that are going up are miscellaneous and capital, you know, they, right. they just, and capital was a decision, <laughs> you know, we didn't. So, so I just, it, I was trying to do the, the imagery of that and knowing that getting it down, especially as I hear, this is how every municipality puts benefits over in their own bucket. I'm not asking for a redoing of all the pieces. So I'll stop there. Thanks, Kathy. Bernie? Yeah, I was going to suggest uh, we could settle for uh, a sort of a best guess. Um, you, you know, uh, looking at the, uh, looking at the, the, we have to factor out, uh, folks need to remember that the Amherst Pelham Regional School District is a separate government. And so when you want to talk about the condition of the middle school, you talk to the Amherst Pelham Regional District uh, and the, the other three towns that are part of that district. So we don't control that. We we get we 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 allocate a certain amount of money to that and how that gets divvied up is the school committee's the regional school committee's responsibility. But for the elementary schools and the towns, uh, we could do a rough guess. You know, if we have uh, uh, 100 employees and 50 of them are in the elementary school, then um, 50% of, of the of the benefit costs get tagged there just as a, a a rough guide the same thing with capital i mean we we have a we get a capital budget that uh capital's expenditures that are really well broken up by department and it shouldn't be that difficult to add those numbers in i'm not looking for people to um reinvent the accounting system and I know full well that there are limits and that the, there's a chart of accounts that the state expects stuff to be reported in, and that's it. Uh, so I don't want folks to have to spend too much time going outside, but it would be instructive to get some rough idea of, of where these costs land in terms of the departments. Holly? Um, so I, I just wanted to say that as part of our um, budget, we do that sort of rough estimate of what benefits costs are to each department. It's more based off of uh, some simple payroll numbers. Um, so, you know, I, I'm just going to, um, you know, do a, a quick, for instance, um, you know, so say we have $10 million worth of wages and a million of it is in police and a million of it is in fire and, you know, 500,000 is in this department and 500,000 is in that department. We allocate out or we estimate what some of those costs would be allocated out to each department simply based on payroll figures, assuming, you know, higher payroll higher number of employees. Um, so some of that information is available, but again, they are estimates. We do not take the time and we don't have the, the bandwidth to take the time to go back and look at every single person and every single insurance plan and every single department and allocate those real costs out. But we do have um, some estimates on that. Um, it is something that we do as part of the budget process because we do need to allocate out costs for insurance and retirement and other um, benefits to the enterprise funds because they have to cover their own benefits. So we, we have to do that. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> we have to do that for the enterprise funds. So we carry it through for basically all of our departments, but they are just estimates. They are not actual numbers. They are based on some, you know, sort of, um, you know, s more standardized 
um, estimates versus you know what's what's really happening. So that information, um, we can we can find a place to put that in the budget document. I would think. Good. Yeah, I think that would be helpful. I, I wouldn't expect it to be precise because it's it's a lot of work. I understand, yeah. but a simple a simple formula, you know, X percent of payroll or Y percent of something, you know, uh, is 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 pension, and you know, that's fine to me. That's fine. I mean, it right. gives us, you know, yeah, it is basically an allocation based on the number of employees in each department and the and the salary amount in each department. So it is like a it, it's an allocation that we do um, based on those two those two data points: um, estimated salaries and estimated FTEs. It, then it's like allocated out. So so there is some information available there. We'll just have to find a way um, to make it more user friendly and and get it into a document. I don't think that that should be a problem. In and I, you know, even if it is. Um, more of a, a a table or a chart just showing what those benefits are it, it is possible it's just something we're going to need to work mm -hmm. on that's fine so, i think I, I i think what the, the what the committee is suggesting is we need a better lens into where things where costs are being uh you know occurring um and uh it doesn't have to be precise you know it just i i think an estimate like that is is to me is is as good as anything uh, another thing i mean i come from the private sector as well and, and we had defined benefit a uh, uh, defined contribution uh pen we didn't have pensions we had to define contribution plan so we didn't have to worry about <laughs> pensions or anything like that <laughs> so um you know it was just whatever the fringe was the fringe was you know uh, mm -hmm. and 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 a lot of that was was uh actually the federal government would set our fringe rates um so uh, anyway, um, any other comments or questions on the financial indicators? Okay, so the next um, item is the rescissions of borrowing authorization requests. And these were pr presented on, um, on Monday. Um, there's a total of 1.665, 1.666 million of borrowing authority that was never used. <clears throat> and so um, we are, we've been asked to rescind that authorization, but under, understanding there's no money there. <laughs> uh, this is just <clears throat> um authorizations that occurred in the past and weren't fully utilized. Uh, so um, we we don't need these authorizations anymore. Uh, Kathy, did you? I move to recommend to the council that we approve the rescissions as presented. I, and I'm making that motion because I understood that it's, it's basically taking uh, a marker off the books and that we're not gonna spend the money. So there's not a lot I think that we can uh, have to discuss. So I make that motion. And I'll second. Okay, the motion is made by Kathy and seconded by Andy. Any discussion? Okay, um, we'll do a roll call vote. I'll vote first, I, uh, Andy. Aye. Alicia. Yes. Kathy? Yes. Uh, Bernie? Support. Okay, so it's a four to nothing with one uh, counselor absent and two, um, two uh, resident members absent. So, okay. I, th thanks, everyone. Um, the next thing on the... Um, on the agenda is the supplemental budget application requests or appropriation requests. And this is basically taking the free cash and allocating it into different uh, buckets. Um, one would be to the stabilization funds. One is to uh, the road and sidewalk repairs. 
One is to the DPW for sidewalk equipment. One is uh, for the waste hauler. It's not really a study, but as much as a an RFP. Um, and then the opioid settlement special rev, uh, revenue fund. Um, so um, I don't know if you want to, I guess we should probably discuss each one of these separately. Um, so why don't we start with um, the reparation stabilization fund? Um, Bob, if, if, I, if I may, uh, we have Guilford uh, waiting for us. So if we could take the highway piece or the sure. DPW piece first and return Mr. Mooring to being a productive employee. Um, Absolutely. So um, the, the town has requested that we appropriate um, from free cash for public works equipment. Uh, it would be the sidewalk equipment uh, for uh, a failure because uh, it's basically a sidewalk sidewalk plow, and it uh, we had I believe we had two working plows, and now we have one. Is that correct, Guilford? We like to keep two plows that are in good shape, and then we have a spare usually. Uh, the spare died, and then the second one died. So we actually don't have we only have one. We're down to one now. Right. Um. I had one question about this, uh, Guilford. Why is it so expensive? It, se it seems like a lot of money for a sidewalk plow. <laughs> um, um, just about everything's expensive now. Uh, that's my common answer to everything. Um, we, The plow we have now, which is the newer plow, if we were to buy another one of those plows, we would be asking for around $300,000. The plow we're asking for now is just shy of $200,000. And actually, we might be able to get it down to a little less than that. But um, this is a machine that is used for snow plow removal. It, it, it's narrow. It fits on our sidewalks. Um, the other machine, most of the other machines we have are too wide for the sidewalks, and it has dedicated tools and attachments that go with it. It can be used in the summer. It can be used all four seasons, but specifically, we get this size machine just for the sidewalks. Is there any uh, comment or any other discussion of this particular item? I, I do. I would like to. Can I say one more thing? Sure. Yes, go ahead. Um, if we actually enforce the town bylaw that said all residents have to plow their sidewalk in front of their property, we could go down and stay at one machine because we have the town is response. By that, that by that bylaw, the town is responsible for much fewer sidewalks than we plow. But because we've made a commitment to at least go through once and plow certain sidewalks that are in the route to school because the children need to have the sidewalks cleared within 24 hours, um, because we've made these commitments to do sidewalks that aren't owned by the town um, and are on adjacent to pro other properties, we do need the two machines. It takes 24 hours with two machines to get the sidewalks clear. Um, so if we were actually to address the issue and say, nope, we're not doing the list that we do, we're only doing sidewalks owned by the town on town properties, then we could probably get by with one machine and a spare and we'd be okay. Uh, so just so you know, uh, that was brought up during the town council meeting and that's the answer to that. Okay, uh, just for the record, uh, Councilor Haneke has joined us. Uh, Councilor Haneke, can you hear me? I can, thank you. Great, okay. So, uh, Councilor Haneke, we've been through, we're, we're, we just started really talking about the supplemental budget appropriation requests. We've been through uh, public comment and discussion of financial indicators and the rescissions about borrowing authorizations. So, um, we're hopefully uh, you, you didn't miss much. <laughs> um, if you have any other comments on the financial indicators, um, can you hold those comments and we'll take them up after we've we've finished going through these uh, these uh, appropriations. Um, 
Any other, uh, Kathy? Uh, yeah, Bob, I just wanted to build, uh, since we've got Rupert, uh, we've got Guilford here. Um, Guilford, in February, you would ask for, I think, a more sophisticated machine, a more dedicated, and the uh, quoted price of that was about 250000 And at that point, you had more working ones. So I'm just echoing Bob's. I was surprised if this is the kind you now have. I mean, our sense is you wanted a really expensive one in addition to the ones you had. Um, so um, so just a question on the price, uh, the price of it. Because I, I think given what else is happening in town, not plowing the sidewalks near the schools would, would and asking the homeowners to do that is not a good idea. Um, I do see the in the budget on the fourth quarter, the place where we had savings is snow and ice. So we just had less. Um, so in terms of the amount of time that was spent plowing, we had less snow, um, maybe not less ice. So I, I just don't know on, on terms of whether how many hours you were out in the past year versus hours the years before on sidewalks as opposed to streets. So it's it's kind of a Bob's question with a, is it really 200 or is it near, near to 150 to get one of these? Um, and are they available used anywhere? So the golf course amazingly found a used piece of equipment that was only a quarter of the price of what they had originally asked. So it's just trying to think of how to, if we absolutely have to have it, I, for one, would be reluctant to not do sidewalks near schools. Um, so I'll stop. Bernie? Yeah, I'd like to uh, see if we could assemble a large group of of uh, meteorologists and physicists <laughs> to develop a uh, this is how much snow we'll get algorithm so we can stop doing this stuff. I mean, uh, you know, the, the only place in, the, in in Massachusetts where you can overspend your budget without, uh, uh, you know, any any kind of prior approval is snow removal. Um, it is what it is. I'm assuming that you know this this equipment is available on the on the state bid list or something else like it. And that this is a reasonable price um, in terms of what the market wants for these devices, which have gotten very expensive all all, all over. Uh, we'll get more expensive too when we get tariffs because we pay for tariffs. Um, so I, I would favor getting this. And also just on a personal note, um, if you could deploy it more on Southeast Street on our sidewalks, I would very much appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. Councilor Haneke? Yeah, um, I apologize for being late. So I apologize if this question has already been asked and answered with snow removal, the, the snow equipment. Um, with climate change, and I think Kathy touched on this a little bit, we are seeing less snow. And given the answer I just heard Guilford talk about, about sidewalk plows and how if we lessened the number of sidewalks, we'd need less plows, what are we, how are we planning for potentially never needing a plow? <laughs> you know, like, I, I guess my question is, we've seen a huge decrease in the, in snow and ice over the last decade that I've lived here in terms of how much we get every year. So what is the expectation for actually using the second one? How often and for how many years are we going to need to use it? because maybe in a couple of years, sadly, we're not even going to have snow to actually plow. And so I, I guess I understand that Guilford's saying, well, if we do all the sidewalks, we need two every storm, I guess, but are we thinking about this as 200,000 for an average now of four times a year of getting rid of two inches of snow on X number of additional sidewalks? And is that the right thing to be spending $200,000 on? Or should we be spending $200,000 on something that would get more use and be more beneficial to this town? Gilbert? 
we actually do look at that and that's why we kind of pushed hard to get the machine that we have now the the, the newer machine it is pretty much a machine that's geared around winter operations. It's narrow, it fits on the sidewalks, and it's meant to move through snow. It's not tracked. Uh, we used to have a tracked machine and that was the best one, um, but we've gotten away from tracked machines because we need to have some type of usability or some type of ability to use this these machines during other seasons. When, when, you, say, really... tr when you say tracked, you mean like a tank, not wheels, right? Right, and has it has tracks. It doesn't have wheels. Um, and the way the tracks were set up, it's not usable except in the snow. It was kind of set up to be a snow machine, sort of like if you go skiing and you see the grooming machines. Um, so actually, if ski resorts close, maybe we could pick up some cheap groomers and <laughs> do that instead of um, plowing. That'd be kind of it could work out okay, but. So we, we've thought about it and we've kind of moved away. Um, so having one machine, which is a very good snow removal machine for big storms is what we have. And then we try to have us machine two machines that are smaller, fit on sidewalks, can do the work, but then also can be used more during this the rest of the seasons, the other three seasons. And that's kind of what, that's what we're asking for here. This machine is not the dedicated, you use it only on snow snow days and you only use it to plow sidewalks. This machine can be used for other things as well. Councilor Haneke. Thank you. Can I can I ask a couple of follow-ups? Can you explain, maybe, I missed this. So if, if, if I did miss the explanation of what it can do in the other seasons, just tell me I missed it <laughs> and don't redo it. Um, but, but what exactly can it do in the other seasons? And then to go back to what Guilford said and then what Kathy said about, well, we should continue to plow the areas around, the sidewalks around certain areas that are not town owned. Um, I'm not sure I agree with that. And I'm gonna take a position that people may not like, but we have a bylaw. I definitely agree we need to enforce that bylaw, but if we're, where's where's the stoppage of when when we have a bylaw that says, if you own land adjacent to a sidewalk, you have to plow it. But then we also say, oh, but if it's in this area, we're going to do it for you. Then who actually, if it's not done in 24 hours, gets the ticket? Whose responsibility does it actually become? And are we treating residents differently under the bylaw simply because of where they live? And could that be seen as preferential treatment to certain neighborhoods and not other neighborhoods because of where they live versus trying to say to everyone, you have a responsibility in this town that if you have a sidewalk abutting your land, you have to go out and shovel it or hire someone to do so within 24 hours. Is it right to treat different property owners differently based on where they live. And I'm not sure it is. So I know it's probably an unpopular view, but I'm just going to say it. And should we remove the non-town owned sidewalks from plowing? I, I can say from personal um, experience campaigning, um, it, a couple of residents mentioned this very thing. They said, the town plows other streets, they don't plow our street or our sidewalks, they don't plow our sidewalk. <clears throat> um, and they didn't think that was fair. Um, so it is an issue with, with uh, a number of people. <clears throat> Does anyone and, have any? Go ahead. And did I hear at Guilford correctly, if we remove <clears throat> not, if we say we're not going to plow sidewalks that are not the towns, we don't actually need to make this purchase? We can we can put off this purchase if we say we're not going to plow this year we're not going to plow any sidewalk that doesn't belong to the town we could put off the purchase yes. Thank. Polly, I'm going to ask this probably slightly unpopular question as well, um, and forgive me I don't know the um probably should know the answer to this, but Guilford, what's the lead time on a piece of equipment like this? Is, is this something that we could even get before? uh this winter season or is this something that is like a year out purchase you know back ordered uh waiting for if you made the decision today we could place an order 
tomorrow and have a machine here in November. At the schedule you have going right now, um, we would place it in the order probably at the end of November and we would get one of the machines in December. Thank you. I think that's a, so just something that's important to know right now. Thank you very much. So we have, <laughs> there's a couple of issues with this um, that, um, you know, we, we have the actual cost itself and then we have the issue of the bylaw and uh, <clears throat> whether we're going to enforce the bylaw that we have. Um, I don't know that we as the finance committee can discuss the bylaw or can 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 make a recommendation on the bylaw itself. Um, I don't know, Andy, do you have any thoughts about whether the finance committee should be doing this or? I think you can, we can go as far as saying, making an observation that if the bylaw was going to be enforced and um, people were going to follow through with it, it would be an unnecessary purchase. That would be a fair observation to make without taking a position. Uh, I do think I kind of agree that uh, ultimately it's council decision as a whole, not belonging to uh, this committee in particular. Yeah. Thank you. Bernie? Um, I'm just curious as to whose budget would or allocation would have to go up to enforce the bylaw. Um, because I'm not sure that we have the person power to do that. I'm also wondering um, at what point uh, do we uh, have to go into court and defend ourselves when someone who's uh, mobility impaired uh, can't access a sidewalk because it hasn't been plowed or the town hasn't enforced its bylaw? Uh, it's a thicket. Uh, it's a thicket. And this is not the only, every town I've worked in and every town I've, 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 uh, I've lived in, it has, it has a similar bylaw and the similar discussion comes up every winter. Um, there isn't a good answer. Uh, I, I think what we're, we're <laughs> what we're doing is we're handicapping our DPW. Um, and, and we're also asking for a considerable amount of, 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 um, of trouble if we, you know, do try to really enforce that bylaw rigidly. Um, it, it's something we're not going to solve here. I think the issue is, do we, do we, uh, uh, you know, give the DPW a bit more in terms of its, uh, its ability to operate or do we just simply move on? Any other comments? Uh, Councilor Haneke? Yeah. Can I just ask a question? <clears throat> and again, I apologize. I was late. So I don't know whether this has been discussed. Um, have we discussed this or are we going to discuss this before potentially voting on a recommendation within the within the guise of all of the allocations and all of the financial orders that were were referred to us regarding the surplus money that is in free cash to go or are we solely looking at each one separately I thought we should look at each one separately. Uh, I mean, we could we could vote in, in, as a, as a unit, but I think it's I think they're different enough, um, and you know some some are are more of a you know like the opioid settlement. It's what we got from the state. You know, we're we're just putting it into a you know a a, a, a you know we're we're putting it into a, a revolving fund. You know, it's it's really not. In other words, it's it's a different story than you know, spending a million dollars on roads or spending two hundred thousand dollars on a sidewalk, sidewalks, uh, snow removal. So that's that's what I thought. I mean, it's it's really up to the committee. If anyone wants to so, <clears throat> think this is the wrong approach, let let me know. Well, I guess my question is relates twofold. One to the council on Monday talked about an additional appropriation for the charter review committee. And I, again, I don't know whether I missed it, but 
where is that money coming from? What's the plan for that? Have we talked about that? And should that be part of these discussions about would we want to take instead of 200,000 for a sidewalk plow, a little less or none so that we can fund consultants for charter review or would that come from somewhere else? And then a full discussion on, I'm, I'm particularly thinking about the capital state, the, the free cash transfers to capital stabilization and the three capital orders, this one roads and sidewalks and waste hauling um, and whether those are overall the right transfers to make and how do we have that conversation if we're voting each one of these separately? Okay, that's fair. Uh, Kathy? Um, my suggestion would be don't vote each separately, go through each with a quick discussion and then come back. Because um, Mandy, what you missed, and we heard some on Monday night and we've certainly had some in writing. Um, people are wondering about some pretty big items like the middle school roof and mold or the high school roof. And I, I, I'm I, not sure everyone is aware of, but those haven't even been proposed at the capital discussion meetings. It's not been on the table. We all know if you've been in the middle school and see the buckets that are collecting water, you know the roof has a problem. So, you know, we're not quite in a position to talk about the millions of dollars something else would do, but I think a discussion of, uh, you know, when and how do some big ticket capital items get on a list if no one has asked us for the money for them? So you brought up charter on Monday night. So Bob, I would just go through each of the ones we have on our docket and then come back to say, is there something missing that we want to consider? And then if we need to, to vote, I mean, the marijuana, the cannabis one, I think is the easy one where we said we would do it and let's just put it into that. But I do on opioid settlement, the one question I had on that is what can that money ultimately be used for? So when we get to that, I'll ask it again. Uh, Paul, did you want to weigh in? Yeah, if you don't mind. So on on the sidewalk plow, um, the, I think that the the what will happen this summer and whether we get snow or not, um, you know, we were with the Secretary of Transportation yesterday and they their long range forecast is about the same as last year. That's what they said. But who knows, right? You know, is this a, you know, past performance is not an indicator of future, whatever they say in financial. Um, but you know, I think changing the the way we have been doing things that that's it. We should be really explicit to with the public about it. And there, you if there are are sidewalks that are not plowed, and kids are or parents and kids are having a hard time getting to schools, we will hear about it, and and people will say do something about it. So that and we're you know that I think that's the conundrum we're in right now. Do we continue to look at the routes to school that we use? And then then there's the equity question, which is why that sidewalk night, why not the sidewalk on Southeast street, right? Um, and why are you doing those? Why are you privileging that? And so I think those are all really important policy discussions. In terms of other capital needs, you know, the I think you have to carve out the region. That's a separate governmental entity. It's not something the council can just do. They haven't asked for money. The region has to vote the regional school committee. It's, it's not part, it's part of the town, but we just contribute to it. So it's, I think that, um, that's a that's a wholly different conversation, uh, and um, I think those are two things I want to mention. Okay, so why don't we uh, move on um, and uh, talk about the highway, uh, road, road and sidewalk repairs, because that's the other piece I think that Guilford needs to weigh in on. Um, and I, you know, again. This is a million dollars from free cash to basically re resurface um, roads and fix uh, sidewalks. Any uh, questions or comments on this? Okay. Uh, Councilor Haneke? <clears throat> um, my only question, I think, is a question we tend to ask regularly, and I'm pretty sure I know the answer to this, but is if we appropriate this money are we sure we can are there are we sure there is capacity for the road pavers to for us to be able to use this and use it next year um in other words can we get a contract that will use it all <laughs> capacity wise cuz i know capacity is an issue with paving 
Yes, we can, if we are appropriate it now, we can put that in the bid and we can actually bid it out and and guarantee that that's what will be in the bid and be performed next season. Any other questions, comments? Okay, so why don't we um, do an easy one, like cannabis uh, tax, which is $74,334. That's a little bit more than what I anticipated, which is good. Um, that would bring the reparations uh, to the reparations stable fund stabilization fund, and that would bring that up to almost five hundred and sixty thousand uh, dollars. Any comments on that? Okay. Um, and the opioid, um, uh, Councillor Haneke, you did ask the question: Is what I think it was you or Kathy? What was it? What would we use this for? Uh, what What are the uses for the op opioid? Uh, funds. So I had two. How much total is in it? Because I we we put a big amount last year in, and now this year, and I don't know what the base was. And then I think on Monday night the answer I got is most of it is there. So I just wasn't sure what what can it be used for, and can any of it be used for the kinds of people and services the town provides around, um, whether it's in CRESS or in police, and uh, managing people who have drug-related problems. So is it potential that us, we could, if there's a big balance, could we start spending it? So that, it was not my question about putting it aside, because it seems like we have to. It was what could we use it for, and how much do we have? Uh Councilor Hanke? I, I mean, I don't have an answer to that, but my question will actually piggyback on that, um, which is, this is a settlement that seems like it's coming through over a number of years. What is it? So, so the piggyback is how many years can we expect to receive opioid settlement money and how much total at the end of that will there be? Yeah, that's the same. So it's, it's looking at the pie, Mandy, and, you know, at some point, presumably, we would start spending what's in the what's in the pot <laughs> on what. Paul, yeah. So you're right; it's multi-year, and we can get that sort of projection out um, for you. Holly, do you, Holly may be able to tell you how much is in there now. Um, I think, as I said on Monday, the the health director, public health director, has been working on a regional basis for, for a plan of action um, on how to allocate the funds, um, and you know. In terms of what we can, we don't have to go through that process. We can or participate that way. Um, we have talked about um, with the prior superintendent about using some of the funds to support some staffing at the um, middle or, or high school in terms of um, counseling services and things like that. So uh, there's a, um, a a range of things, but it has to be tied to opioid abuse. But you know, in terms of counseling and preventive work, that's also available as well. So. Um, that's that's sort of living with the um, health department now, looking for guidance from them on how to allocate the funds. But we can get certainly give you the settlement, what what the settlement. It's multiple settlements actually, um, from different pharmaceutical companies. And Paul, can you, if the health department is looking at it, so my thing is, if we had a clinical social worker with skills in dealing with drug, whether they're working with the police department or with CRESS, could this pick? Could this money pick up a salary? So that's that's what I'm looking. You know, it's kind of getting down to to yeah. that level. Um, or would it need? We in three towns need to support that person, and so we're picking up a third of a person or a half of a person or something. I'm looking the same way we often look at the Community Preservation Act money mm -hmm. as the potential supplement to capital side of what we're doing. So this mm -hmm. one was to the service side. Yeah, so I don't know if it can supplant existing positions, but I, we can look into that. I'm not positive, Holly, we know, but I, we'd no. have to look at what the rules are for that. And I wasn't doing supplant. I was doing an ad when okay. I've, I've seen that there's been a request for one more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and mm -hmm. um, and so that's, and, and 
that's a different discussion when we get to the forecasting mm -hmm. of the budget and our guidelines. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but I wanted to know if that money was potentially available for a, of a, for a human being. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we can send you what the rules are, I think, and we can give you the, the balance. It looks like Holly has her hands up for. Yeah. Holly, do you have the balance? Yep. <clears throat> So in, um, I believe it was FY23 was our first year, uh, we collected approximately $162,000 from the opioid settlement. FY24 was uh, just over $188,000 as the um, uh, appropriation order says. So right now we'd be looking at about $350,000 in the opioid um, settlement fund account. Um, this is, <clears throat> again, what I call a housekeeping item. This is to um, to transfer the money into a, into a special revenue fund so that we can keep track of it. We have to report annually by the penny back to um, the, uh, the state on this money. So um, $350,000, um, potentially millions of dollars. This is, a, I believe, a 20-year mm -hmm. settlement, um, and there have been different pharmaceutical pharmaceutical companies that have been named in the suit and um you know th there are potentially more that could be named so there will be um a fair amount of funds the i will dig it up i believe i had sent it to kathy i i think we had this question last year which is it has a um an igr from um the state on how the funds can be spent. But one of the first things that has to happen is you have to develop a plan. You have to have community input. You have to, um, you know, it, it has to be, um, there has to be input from people who are directly affected by the opioid and substance abuse disorders. So that process is something that my understanding is the, um, health director is working on now there will likely be some opportunities for some regional um approaches to this because it doesn't stop at the you know amherst town line border um it it, it is you know in all the towns around us and all the other towns so there there are going to be some opportunities for some regional work on this um and you know they they certainly would like us to leverage you know, other funds and, and things like that, but I am not sure on um, the supplanting as well, but if what Kathy was talking about would not be replacing a salary, but possibly hi hiring an additional person for this work, that would likely, I would assume, be allowed, um, but supplanting somebody's um, pay would likely not. I would have to double check, but I will find the IGR um, from the state and I will forward that to you. I thought I had done that like around um, the end of the year or early last year, but it, it it's not a hundred percent clear, but there are, you know, certainly some steps that we need to follow, um, including having a plan and getting community input. Thank you. Uh, Bernie? Yeah, my preference would be not to hire someone. My preference would be to uh, to to get together with our our neighbors, and to contract with an organization that has mm -hmm. the, uh, the the staff on hand and the skills to not simply provide some counseling or some identification, some education, but who could provide some treatment and some case management and leverage Medicare and other Medicaid and other funds along with that, so that we get some bang for the buck here. Um, this is this is too big of a problem to go it alone and have a person in Amherst. We really need to look at this on a regional basis. We really look to need to look to hire in an organization with some 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 real skills and some real capacity to provide actual services. Holly, your uh, hand is up. Okay. Sorry, I didn't lower it. <laughs> okay. Uh, any other discussion of this particular <coughs> item? Um, so uh, what's left is the um, waste hauler program, <coughs> the uh, $125,000 for um, the purpose. Um, basically, I, 
I thought that what this was for really was to get a a um, consultant in to write the RFP, to work with us to write the RFP so that we got <clears throat> answers to the questions that we had. Um, and the question that has arisen, uh, Paul, is whether or not this also would include any an, an outreach effort, or is this only for writing the RFP? So, Guilford, did you or Melissa, did you want to address that? I think I think if there's enough money there to do both, if that's what we need. Is that the concept? Yeah. So, I, I had thought that we were gonna try and um, figure out like not just write the RFP to procure the service, but truly understand what the the cost of a, a service like this was. And that's why I, I maybe I thought the scope was bigger than the council's intention, so. I, I think the concept was get this to creation, not just a piece at a time. So if we need more money going down, uh, that that would be, we'd have to come back and go to step two. So it gives, it gives us flexibility the actual um, doing the RFP won't cost this this amount of money. Kathy? Um, just continuing on this, what, what we would ask whoever the entity is, um, my sense is there are, and Andy's already cited them, there are a few communities that do something similar to what we might be considering. Um, would they be gathering the RFPs that they have used when they go out. And secondly, um, the staff, the staffing that this requires at the Guilford, at the DPW, that, that okay, we've, we've got this thing, but do complaints come into the town? Do they go out to whoever's doing this? Do the, does the town have to mediate them? Is there a, every five years we recontract? I don't think it's a zero labor cost side. So I, I would just like to make sure that the consultant gives us back the kind of information that every time I ask for it is, well, that's not as easy to get kind of, you know, so in reaching out to other towns, you have a whole person, for example, who is now the refuse person working with the contracted because calls are coming in. And, um, you know, so we had one person at a, a, a district meeting talking about the disputes on, particularly on the pay for pay as you throw issue on, had you thrown that much away or had you thrown less away? <laughs> um, you know, if we go that route, if we go bucket size, probably there'll be less of that issue rather than bags. So I just think, you know, that at the end of this, we should be able to do a, yes, we want to do it or no, we want to do it based on some pretty concrete information of what has happened in other towns after they've done it for five or six years. So South Alley switched. So I, I don't want it to be still in the us asking questions about it. So I'm assuming this large amount of money might be able to do that. It seems like a big amount of money. Any other comments or questions? Uh, Councilor Haneke? So, yeah, I guess Kathy didn't word it as a question, but is Kathy's assumption correct? <laughs> is the answer I want to know. Yes and no. <laughs> Uh, Can you the, explain that? The, the, <laughs> the goal the goal we have is to put together an RFP and go out and get information about the cost now. And we can put together the cost now. We can put together the cost for the town to be the complainter, complaint receiver. We can put together the cost for the contractor to be the complaint receiver. But this is for the cost now. The town can only do contracts for three years. This is only going to be a three-year contract or a three-year agreement. What happens in the fall on years, we cannot answer and we will not be able to answer. Because even if we go back, go to other communities who are doing this now, their changes are now. No one, I think someone said this earlier, maybe not in this meeting, but another meeting. If we had crystal balls and knew what the future was, we wouldn't be doing these jobs. We would have all our money and be happy people. Um, so 
it's it's really kind of what we do is we're going to go out and get an RFP. We're going to get contractors to respond. And we're going to have costs for now, for the next three years. And then we'll have the program set up for the next three years. What happens in the future will have be another cost and another RFP and another change. Bernie? <clears throat> this is one item that I, I will be opposed to. Uh, I'm not sure what problem it's trying to solve. Um, and what I know is what I've been able to uh, what I've been able to read uh, in in uh, various various sources. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what the problem is we're trying to address. Um, there are lots and lots of variables here. I would think that um, if we were going to go forward with the plan, we'd have a much better, more definitive description of what we were looking for. Um, this seems to me to be a concept of a plan and uh, I can't support it. Yeah, Bernie, one, one of the, 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 the issues that's come up has been that we don't know um, how much it would cost to do various services like have the, the waste hauler uh, manage complaints and disputes. We don't know how much that costs. Um, and so the idea of the RFP is to get as, as Guilford said, get today's costs for various services and then try to figure out, does it make sense to shift what we're doing now over to a newer, newer system based on the cost? <clears throat> and, you know, there's, there's other costs, you know, there's, there's other values <clears throat> embedded in this, uh, such as people wanting to reduce greenhouse gas emissions from landfills and things like that. So <clears throat> it's complicated. Um, yeah, it, it, it is. And, um, you know, at the risk of losing what little environmental cred I have left, um, I, I'm not convinced that we need to move forward with this right now. Um, I, I don't see any groundswell of support for it, but, you know, that's me. Thanks. Okay. Uh, Councilor Haneke? So as with the original vote at council, not this referral, but the one tasking Paul, I think with, with going forward with this, um, I still struggle with the expenditure of this money and everything. Um, but is our role here, given that the council has voted to ask the manager to do this with the full knowledge that that vote would lead to needing money to get to the RFP sending out stage. Is it our role now to say, don't do that money to go against our own sort of prior vote and, and re-question that or not? Um, or is our role to say, this supports a prior town council action. And so, yes, this vote, this money should be spent. Hearing that though, Paul just said that the request for 120 some thousand is well above the amount needed to get to the RFP. And so where do we, where do we make that recommendation? Just the money to get to the RFP and then you got to come back because at that stage we're going to make another decision or should we go beyond that given what the council has already said because i guess some of my principles has always been support prior council actions um even if i didn't necessarily support them to begin with and i think i voted for this this one after a lot of discussion but i've i've always been worried and this is where i don't know whether the full 125 we should we should allocate um because there's two principles at work with this discussion and why it's taken so long. There's the one of the original principle from Zero Waste Amherst, which is reduce our GHGs, reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. emissions. Well, we can do that without an RFP. And I've always been that way. We can literally just revise the bylaw that says all haulers in town must collect and and it curbside composting and must do this. We can do that without an RFP. We don't need an RFP to revise the bylaw. What has 
been the sticking point is the second half of this, which is a goal to reduce residents' costs. And that's where we need the bylaw. But, and that's that's what people keep saying we need an RFP for, because we don't know whether just doing the bylaw changes that would reduce greenhouse mm -hmm. gas emissions will actually reduce costs. And then there's the thing of, well, if it doesn't, do we want to actually do the right thing for the climate? Um, I'm not sure it's worth spending more than just getting to the RFP and supporting the bare minimum of that mm -hmm. reform request to Paul when we don't know whether we'll move forward if the costs are more expensive. Because if the costs are more expensive and our answer would be absolutely not, why should we be doing outreach then? Why should we spend the money for outreach if when the RFPs come back, we might just nix it completely if it's more expensive? So I'm not sure we should spend the whole amount or even recommend spending the whole amount versus just getting us to the RFP stage. Andy? Yeah, no, I think Andy has raised, uh, has framed it pretty well. The uh, question that we need to come up with a, uh, a recommendation on is whether we should be focusing on the particular request that the council has already made or what is logically to follow to make for a meaningful program. I think what the uh, sponsors have been thinking and what uh, the TSO had been discussing was that there is an advantage in being able, in having the town administer the program so that the, um, there's an, uh, and that's, that's partly just practical and partly philosophical as to whether um, town control um, is is um, a value that is important to have in anything that you do. Um, you know, we have a lot of experience from look, uh, from other towns and communities uh, in getting this kind of program going. Uh, I think the outreach will be important uh, whether we need a consultant you know, whether a consultant is a necessary part of it is a decision that hasn't been made. And that's where you get back to Mandy's point is, um, should we be recommending only the money that's on a, on a recommendation that's already been made? Or should we be assuming that there will be additional costs and just creating a essentially a money bucket that's available for the town manager to go to the next step, if that's appropriate. Thanks. Alicia? Um, thank you, Bob. I also think that Mandy Jo is bringing up a really great question. Um, I think I am in favor of approving the monies that is needed to support what we have already discussed and voted on at the council level. Um, and I think the RFP and the outreach is important because it's us essentially making sure that we're approaching this in a way that's consistent with our council goals and decision and um, making sure we're able to assess the sustainability of whatever decision we decide to make, whichever way we decide to go with this. And so at the very least, I think we should be funding this to get us to the RFP. Um, and, and I think that I have actually seen and heard lots of support around this initiative, which is also sort of fueling my interest in continuing to pursuing and seeing if this is something possible and would be beneficial for the town. Um, and so I think I would like to talk about the difference between the whole amount versus the partial amount. Um, I think that's the conversation I would be interested in continuing to have at this point. Okay, so um, I don't know, Guilford or 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 Paul, can you discuss like of the 125k, how much is needed for a consultant to get us to the RFP? We haven't had a meeting yet to talk to the consultant we were gonna we we're gonna use, so we haven't really work that out. We're trying to set that meeting up and we haven't been successful yet. 
So the answer right now is we don't know. <laughs> uh, I mean, if you wanted to cut it in half, if and do, do half that, or just do sep, well half, do half, or that would be fine. I mean, we we can't. I mean, we understand what you're you're saying here. We only plan to do what we've been told to do. So if it's less money, we're not going to spend the extra money on swag. We don't need to buy swag. That was a town <laughs> inside town joke. Sorry. Okay. Guildford, do you know when that meeting might happen? I we were hoping estimate. We were hoping to have it last month, but we just haven't been able to get everybody together. The consultant and us, we just haven't been able to. The holidays are coming and hopefully we can do it before Thanksgiving or right after Thanksgiving. Okay. Any other discussion of this? Okay, um, the other thing that uh, we need to talk about is the uh, the transfer from free cash to the capital stabilization fund. And uh, Councillor Haneke and others have raised an issue, which is, you know, a consultant or some funding for the <coughs> the commission um, study group or whatever it's called the um, Charter Review Commission. Um, and, um, you know, what the question is, do, did we want to take some of this money and <clears throat> use it to fund, uh, to fund the uh, Charter Review Commission expenses or give them a, a consultant or whatever. Um, so I'd like to open up that question, Andy. Yeah, I mean, I think that there's some questions to the need an answer to. One is, has the Charter Review Com Commission asked for this? And second, uh, uh, in relation to that, has uh, do we have any estimate of what uh, the cost might be to provide whatever it is the Charter Review Commission has asked for. So mm -hmm. those are the two basic questions I think you always need in this kind of request. As far as uh, transfer of funds to uh, capital stabilization, uh, as a general principle, I think that uh, that's really important because we have two buildings that really need to uh, move forward and get done. We've been talking about them forever, DPW. Uh, but we're asking our DPW staff to work in is, um, is just totally unacceptable. Um, and, uh, you know, the needs of the central fire station and getting a fire station that's further south um, have been discussed for uh, uh, longer than any of us would ever want to recognize. So we need to move forward. And, um, you know, the the plan that we're, uh, our, our, a redo of the funding plan, which we will eventually see when, when it's ready. And I understand there's a lot of time that needs to go into that. Um, the last time we saw a plan from uh, Sean Mangano, he talked about the, uh, wisdom of uh, building up enough money so that we can take care of one of those two buildings uh, with cash and not have to do financing on it. And uh, we had discussed that in this committee uh, when that was presented to us. So uh, I think that uh, uh, the uh, uh, we, we need to take the responsible decision to fund um, the uh, enterprise fund to the extent that we can. Uh, not the enterprise fund, but the uh, stabilization fund. Councilor Haneke. So I agree with Andy that given the discussion we've just had, I would not, I support the second half of that financial order, um, 2512A that 
moves to capital stabilization without reducing it at this point. Um, but I think given the conversation we just had with waste hauling and sidewalk plows, um, I would support reducing at least one of those to fund some charter review committee consultant money. Um, it was in our financial guidelines for fiscal year 25 to put money in for a consultant um, or at least consider it. And it doesn't seem to have happened. I'm not faulting only the town manager on that. We also apparently dropped the ball as a finance committee on confirming whether or not that happened and whether we wanted it to happen when the budget came to us. Um, so, you know, I think a, a, a cup, we also dropped a ball there. Um, but having served on a charter commission, which is different than the charter review committee and the roles are different and the things to do different, you know, things that you can do are different. Um, a consultant is extremely helpful, um, not just for what you would expect them to be helpful, their knowledge of other charters, their knowledge of what other towns are doing, their knowledge of what they've heard works or might not work as they're working with other towns to modify their charters. But what they're also helpful in doing is organizing stuff and taking the charter commission when I was on it did not have any staff assistance at all. I will say that right now. Right now, the Charter Review Committee has our town, our council clerk as the staff assistants who has very little, probably extra time. And so I think it would be wise asking Athena whether she would like the help organizing the committee. The, 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 the consultant took a lot of the when do you do what off the plate and what is the right order to do stuff? And a lot of those organization little things off the plate of the commission. And I can see that really helping our town, our council clerk manage this committee's work and actually helping getting it completed in a more efficient, quicker manner and, and pace than they might do without one. So I... I brought it up because someone who is not on the Charter Review Committee asked about it. Um, and when I was responding to them, I saw that we hadn't actually potentially funded something our guidelines said we wanted to fund. Um, but I don't know whether the committee itself has fully taken a vote, but I think we should think about modifying the orders to do that or waiting and asking them before we make recommendations on these, considering that I think we've got enough money to do it if we have the waste hauler bylaw appropriation to this. I believe six years, eight years ago, I guess it would be, the full contract for the Collins Center was approximately $20,000 and the Charter Commission used I think had a full appropriation of around 40,000 for other things too. But I think the Collins Center's contract was around 20,000. Um, but I'm sure Holly could totally look up what was paid to the Collins Center back in 2018, maybe not now, but eventually um, to confirm that. Bernie? Uh, you're, you're on mute, Bernie. Uh, did my click the right button here. I happen to sit on the Charter Review Committee. Um, no, we haven't. We Yes, we've noticed we don't have a budget. Um, we've talked some about who, um, what organizations or individuals we might want to have assist us. We have not drawn any conclusions um, to that. Uh, we do want to have... Um, the town attorney do a presentation on uh, the uh, on the charter and the the charge that we've been given, um, and we assumed that we would have to poach that time from um, an existing line somewhere. Um, I can't speak for the uh, I can't speak for the, the the committee. I'm one of nine, but I would welcome sixty two thousand five hundred dollars uh, as a budget. <laughs> which happens to be half of the waste money. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, that, uh, that, that's something that we could, we could use. And, uh, you know, Athena has been uh, nothing short of super in supporting us. Uh, we, we are uh, 
all to the to a person grateful to have her. Uh, if we could get her some assistance and find someone who was uh, at near not at near her skill level, it would be great. So that's those are my thoughts, not the committee's. Okay, thank you, Kathy. Um, I think Paul was going to respond to some of this. Paul Paul's hand went up, but um, I don't know. <clears throat> you know, so maybe he should go first. So I don't have the the committee to uh, talking with Athena about this. The committee has not taken an action to request the funds. Um, so I don't have an order to to propose to the council. Uh, council can't generate its own order, obviously. Um, so, and I, you know, if I I think that we I'm not opposed to them having additional staff. We obviously and they have clear access to town attorney. They're aware of that. Um, it, it, that's not a cost, but if there is a need, we'd want, I'd want them to say what they wanted it for. You would ask me these questions. What do you want to use it for? How much do you need? All those questions haven't been proposed. It, it, I would hope that the committee will take action to put it forward to request, and then we would process it through. And the committee need, if the committee needs resources to get its job done, obviously, you know, it's a council priority. It's a charter requirement. We'd want to provide that. And in terms of Athena's time, uh, her time is really precious. Um, this is something that she's really excited to do. It aligns with her graduate work and she wants to be able to do it, whether that's a realistic expectation given her other uh, responsibilities to the council and something we, you know, and other things going on, we just have to make sure that that's, she's still, but still available to do that. But she really, she likes doing this work and she feels that it's, it's helping her professionally as well. So that's so I think you know the committee votes it and they have a discussion about what they want then we can bring this forward. Okay, uh, I'm ready. Yeah. Now. I'm ready now because that's okay. what I, I want to hear. So, um, so I took it from what you just said, Paul. Is that I always think I'm not going to use quite the right word here, but I always think we've got squirreled away somewhere in these budgets that people have as to, some money. For consultants, so if this consulting money is in the twenty twenty five thousand range, is there any money already? If not, um, if we reduce the uh, trash hauler one by X amount of dollars, and we're we're being asked to do something with free cash, and once we put it somewhere, we're spending from a stabilization fund, which is a different kind of vote. Um, do we have to make the decision now or can we say there is this free cash and if we wanted you to come back with a financial order once you've figured out, is it 20, is it 25, is it, what's the number? Um, it would be added to this mix and waste hauler would be reduced. That's what I'm looking for because we're suggesting the waste hauler could be smaller than the order we're doing and that's just a change the number and we don't have a financial order for the other. So my, that's my comment on the, the Mandy bringing up charter. My comment on putting it in to the capital stabilization fund is I think um, I've seen your plan to put together a committee, Paul, on DPW and fire. I think DPW is in crisis. And so I'm not sure why I would always um, attach them at a hip since I think we made it I think we have made a decision on where they're going to go, which is the, the it was rebuild, debug, deb so I think all the focus should be on the one that's the most urgent, and we should be moving that. You know, there's a I think there's a perception, which is correct in the public, that we just keep building up money, saying something is coming at some point, but there's no action underneath it, and as soon as you keep building up. The money that you're planning on buying a house and now it's 10 years later and you can buy a much more you know and you still haven't bought the house people are wondering whether we're ever going to buy the house so i just think you know and i'm saying soon meaning where i had hoped by the next year on the council we would be getting really concrete to a what does it look like what is the price tag and andy referred to the old I think it really old and out of date. Sean's uh, plugging in some numbers to an Excel spreadsheet. They were, what if the number was this? 
and how would we do the following, including a school number that it, that quickly became out of date. But we need kind of a real number, and it's built into the capital budgeting process that DPW would start to draw on it, but we don't have any. So that's just my plea that building it up and not spending it is really a bad idea, um, you know, without with without a without movement toward a plan to spend it. Let me restate that. I mean, you know, something concrete. So the two questions are, if we lower, if we move some of this off the plate right now and we lowered trash and did Bob vote on each of them and said, but we want to hold some of that money for a potential financial order out of free cash. Can we do that? Do we need to make all the free cash allocations now and you just pointed out we can't make the one Mandy's suggesting because we don't have a financial order and we don't have a plan. No one's asked for the money, so I don't quite understand the timing on when we meet, need to move this money. And we did say we're having a public hearing on it, um, and so this Mandy's got an item that's not even on the list, um, so it's hard to have a public hearing if it's not on the list. So that's a timing question. Paul, did you want to respond to that? Yeah, so, so any appropriation would come from free cash, not from the stabilization fund, the stabilization fund. And actually what we're doing with the stabilization fund is replenishing it, because if you recall, the council took $5 million from the stabilization fund, and that's the mission is to get it back to where it should be. Um, so I think, you know, I think stabilization fund is separate from this. Um, and, you know, we have we will have we will have additional orders coming forward to the council. Um, in the, in the near future uh, for our enterprise funds. So there's going to be more financial requests coming to you. Um, so if there is a charter committee, it could be factored into that. And um, so this this would be an additional appropriation from free cash. And I, Holly would know, or Melissa, how much we have in free cash at the, if you if you vote all these actions, how much actions, you'll have a fair amount in free cash to act, allocate if you so chose. Okay, so Paul, can I just play that back? So if we lower the amount for the trash holder, there's more in free cash if we don't mm -hmm. put it somewhere else. And then later we can come back with this this other order. It doesn't need to be part of the package right now. Right, right. I guess the question would be if, if they voted everything they have on their plate now, Holly or Melissa, how much will we, they have in free cash? Like I think five it's million. in the memo. Yeah, four it's mil four million eight hundred and eighty-two thousand yeah. dollars six oh seven, according to the memo. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right, and and so what I was just going to say is that you know that money sits there and it is available uh, until the end of the fiscal year. You know, it's our policy to maintain about five percent of the operating budget in there, but it 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 is there, you know, and it will it'll continue to to be there. Okay. Um, Holly, did you want to weigh in? Well, I, I was going to, I was going to more or less say very similar to what um, Melissa said is, you, you know, the free cash can be appropriated for any lawful purpose between now and June 30th of next year. Um, it is our, our, I don't want to say policy, but it is our past practice that we allocate out to the stabilization funds what those numbers would be first. And then they, it, it, there have been plenty of years where free cash allocations have come up later on in the year. And, you know, it, it is will still be available to use. Andy? Yeah, one thing is we could do if the um if it's possible with the hearing already having been noticed and that is to uh say let's take $125,000 and recharacterize it as funds provided to the town manager for um projects that are underway um and need um additional expenditures to include waste hauling and uh, the uh, the charter review. And uh, it, it, if it was possible to 
do that, I would really trust the town manager to use those funds wisely for the purposes that we could lump together in that fashion. So, so Annie, are you saying rewrite financial order FY25 dash? 05D to have two completely dissimilar things in it? <laughs> Is yes, that, I think that's what I you're would, I would, they, they are dissimilar, but they're not because they're um, commitments made by the council on projects that um, have uh, uh, need for assistance but don't have costs tied specifically to the amounts that are being to the amount of 125,000 it would give the town manager discretion and uh, I, I I think that uh, I know that he would uh, act responsibly with that fund. Alicia hasn't spoken yet, so she should go first. Okay, Alicia. Um, thank you, Mandy Joe. I just had a clarifying question, maybe for Paul um, or anybody else. Um, I was under the impression that our intention was to use tax credits to replenish the stabilization fund for the money that we removed from it. And so if we are making a decision to not do that, then what happens to the tax credits when we get those? So if the tax credits come in, they would still have to be acted on and it would up to be up to the council to move it back into the, the stabilization fund. I think the mission has been to build the stabilization fund beyond where it is now. Uh, so this is not either or, it's, it's both. Um, and I just, I, if I can jump on, so Kathy had asked about the, uh, Pots of money laying around, and we do not have pots of money laying around. I wish I did, um, but yeah. And then, in terms of Andy's comment, I would really want to think about the scope of what's been presented to the council. Whether that's what you're proposing is within the scope of what. I just want to think about if that's broadening the scope beyond the the order. Um, okay, sorry, I had one other thing. Thank you. That was helpful. Um, I'm also just wondering about the possibility of using some of the excess funds for the school budget, because that ha has been something that we've been hearing a lot. Um, and so I'm wondering if that's something that anyone's willing to consider or talk about. I, I think we should talk about it. I think it's something that has come up and it should be considered and talked about. Um, uh, Councilor Haneke, did you want to weigh in first? Um, I was going to weigh in on a similar subject to what um, Alicia just mentioned. Um, I asked on Monday how we got to these projects, even though I kind of knew the answer, right? <laughs> Roads and sidewalks, waste hauler, and um, um, sidewalk plow. You know, I, I, I understand how you the manager made a decision to pick those three, but I would like more discussion on, um, or more information on who the manager spoke to in deciding not to put forward any others to move, to put forward basically capital for the rest of that money, um, or to choose sidewalk over say something else, particularly with respect to the elementary school and the library. Um, I agree with what the manager said previously that the region buildings, we shouldn't be doing or talking up, sadly, we shouldn't be doing or talking anything about right now. We could allocate 5 million to a region roof, but it's a gift to them. And 1 million of that should be paid for by the other towns if it's 5 million. And the regional committee has not actually kept that roof as a priority on their own capital budget. And so I think we have to defer to that regional committee and we should be actually referring all of the constituents to, that wrote us about the capital needs at the middle school and the high school to the regional school committee to say, hey, redo your capital plan and reprioritize different things. Um, but the elementary schools within our direct, not really purview, but our similar 
ability that the snow sidewalk plow is. It, elementary school stuff comes through JCPC. Library school stuff comes from through JCPC. So did you, I guess I'd like more information on how much conversation you had with our library director and our superintendent as you were coming up with allocating this free cash money. In the four days since the com the council meeting, I, I in rethinking, should we save some back and then allocate it into an FY26 operating side budget? I'm I'm not sure I agree with that anymore, even though I think I'm one of the people that brought up the possibility of it. I, I'm not sure that's wise, but I really do want more information on decisions for capital and these choices. So I can, so as, as I think, as I said on Monday, um, we don't go through a secondary budget process and you know, it's just, our budget process is pretty extensive already. It's the things that are really unusual or emergent. Um, the I don't go to every department head and say, hey, do you get anything? Do you want more money? That's not what we do. Uh, the sidewalk plow came up because of the failure of a piece of equipment. The waste hauler was clear, an initiative of the council. Um, so in, in charter, like that could be one that comes up. If the schools have, have um, unforeseen expenses that are impacting their budget, I, you know, I've already had that conversation with the superintendent about are there are were there things and so we have had some active conversation about um, things that may impact their budget but otherwise the goal is to live within the budget that you have not to create a, a sort of a shadow capital appropriation process because that's it's just really um, you know there's just no capacity to take it on so we try to limit what we do in the fall which is what we always did with the fall town meeting as well um, and, you know, roads was what we have done traditionally. We have not traditionally, we did it last year. Um, and um, it's, to me, what I've heard from the council is that's something we would always want to put more money into because there's, there's just, it's, the need is there. So there isn't a reach out to every, um, if, if, if departments have issues, they tend to communicate that to the, to the comptroller or the finance director. And then that can rise to our attention by we don't actively solicit additional requests for funding. Can I follow up on that? Sure. How would the library director and the su school superintendent on capital needs communicate? How, how would they know to communicate any emergent capital requests to our comptroller um, in advance of this November decision? Because presumably our DPW director communicated that because that's his comptroller, but the schools have a different comptroller, right? <laughs> they have a completely different finance director. So, so I, I hear what you're saying, but I don't know how the schools would communicate those emergent issues to the municipality so that you would know and your answer in the conversation that you've had with Dr. Z is vague as if maybe there are, but you're not willing to say, or maybe she said, no, I, I just don't know. I, I'm not getting a clear sense if she mentioned stuff and you said not now, or if she didn't mention stuff. We, she, um. We've had a conversation. That's all I'm going to say about that. I mean, we I have regular conversations with with the superintendent. Uh, our finance director has regular conversations with the finance officers at the at the school, um, as does our comptroller. That if there is a a need that arises in one of our departments and says that's outside what they can afford within their existing budget, it's going to impact their budget. Not just we want more stuff, but it's like this emergency happened. Um, then they can raise that. They they communicate that to us because otherwise they're gonna they're gonna they alert us. It's like we're our, we have to do this thing, and that means we're gonna be short at the end of the year. They have to start con talking to us right away. And everybody, they're all all the financial officials know how, who to talk to. They certainly know to talk to the comptroller. If they're, <laughs> otherwise, they're not gonna have money when it comes time to pay their bills. Holly, did you want to add something? So I guess I'm just going to say this in a slightly different way is we do not have a formal process for the allocation of free cash, but as I'm assuming everybody is aware, there 
are times when it has come um, from the schools. For instance, I believe it was last fiscal year, $900,000 for the regional track project came out of our free cash. So there's not necessarily a formal process that we follow every time. It is what comes to us from folks. Um, and it, that is unfortunately the way that um, the free cash allocations have worked in the past. Melissa, did you want to add something? Well, I just want to say that while like for an emergency, you know, we deal with emergencies as they happen. Um, but the, you know, you all, everyone here is familiar with the, the formal process for capital needs, which, you know, sometimes emergencies, we make people wait, right? I mean, part of this request from Guilford did come last year before the, the committee through the capital planning committee and those requests did go out um, actually earlier this week to the departments to say, please get your list together. So if something comes out in that formal process for these kind of um, um, emergent needs that then, or, or developing needs like, right? So we know that the, the DPW building has some some stressors, right? And, and Guilford might say that it's an emergency, but we've been we've been managing that for a while now, and we're we're continuing to develop a plan for for real resolution. But sometimes something breaks, and it has to be fixed right now. And I, I think that's what Holly alluded to in the free cash. Like if something comes up, um, the departments. Um, know to contact us and this was outside of the normal process uh, for capital for capital expenditures because something broke but but there is a there is a process and and that and that process has has just begun thank you um kathy yeah i wanted to try to respond from my thoughts to alicia's original question was um, as I understood it, could some of this be shifted to the school in the operating budget? I, I think this is one-time money, and that's a dangerous piece to think be thinking about that. So I, I was thinking instead about, is there a capital side of schools um, that we have on the list to fund? And I'm I'm thinking about the the guidelines, okay, in the context of guidelines. where Where might there be more money? that we could be looking at FY26 school budgets for some more money. So one thing that remains unfunded, Paul, unless you you and the and the schools have figured out how to, to use the ARPA money for it, is we originally said $500,000 to help with the sixth grade moving to the middle school. And that got axed out of ARPA money because they said they weren't ready. We're getting to the point that's an, that's an emergency. Um, if we open a new school and we don't have any room for the sixth grade. Um, so, so whatever part of that was capital in my mind is. So I started looking at what was on the list for Crocker, what was on some of our FY26 capital that felt less urgent. And I was looking at it this way, we're thinking, can we move down from 10.5 capital to 10.3 or 10.2? Because we've got this free, we could move, we could spend some items now that would take them off the list. And they're probably most of the things on the FY26 capital list were not urgent in the same way that a snowplow completely breaking down and you're left without equipment. So that was the one place I'd seen that. And to some extent, um, I can't see an easy way to do it in November 2024, because as I go down the whole list, there it's a pretty eclectic list. And I'm assuming everything on the FY25 list is already in the works, but uh, we had some things there, including Mandy buying IT equipment for Jones, which we actually never discussed. We were so pressed for time because of staff cards. I thought, how can we buy new IT equipment for a library that's gonna be closed? So it's $50,000 that maybe we just don't need to spend and that we're generating, a, we'll be generating a surplus because during the, if, 
Jones moves forward. There's no sense in storing the equipment. So just taking a sharper look at FY25, FY26, and, and Paul is budgeting, I think, because it's too hard to do in the context of what we're doing on the free cash, on where it goes. But uh, it, it, is there a way of thinking that maybe we could go down on 10.5 for FY26 because we have some things that we could see spending the money on now. And the one thing I knew was the sixth grade. And Paul, you said that there was potentially a discussion reopening that instead of allocating it for the canopies on the Fort River parking lot, part of that could go for sixth grade. And with the superintendent, what she's got on her list, I don't know how she's even juggling all these different pieces. Um, and if we're emptying out the middle school, I can't imagine we're putting the sixth grade there. But then I go, well, wait a minute. They ha Once again, we have to have a home for a sixth grader. So it's it's so maybe that was the one place, Alicia, I thought of is a capital expense that the schools don't have any money for um, that was supposed to help with that transition. And it is, Bernie, it's our it's our side of the budget. It's the elementary school side. It's not a request from the region as much as because we're moving elementary kids into the regional school system. It would be an Amherst expenditure, Mandy. It's not a regional, you know. So that's the one I could see that's more is capital as opposed to operating budget. Because like, unless we have a surplus anticipated every year at this extent. Uh, we need that for operating budgets. Um, so this is a longer discussion that hopefully we'll start to get to with the guidelines. Alicia? Um, thank you, Kathy. I, I actually really appreciate that point of view in terms of understanding what could be considered a capital um, expense. Um, but that also just leads me to wonder maybe or ask for some clarity in terms of what Paul said earlier um, and that we are looking for unforeseen costs. And is that an unforeseen cost? Because I think we all have seen this coming for a while. And why would it be that we would only allow unforeseen costs to be dealt with in this way? Or was that just a figure of speech for that specific topic that we were talking about? Or do we generally only use this for unforeseen emergencies? So the free cash can be spent on any legal purpose. I think Holly said that. The One of the, one of the th reasons we keep free cash available is because there can be unforeseen costs. It's not the only criteria, but that is why you keep money saved up in case something like the council has an initiative like the like the nine hundred thousand to the schools last year, or um, if there's a, a major um, failure for something and we need to appropriate funds in the in the in the spring or whatever. So that's why the council's policy is to have five percent um, set aside for that purpose. So it's not just um, unforeseen, but that's the type of thing that usually arises that demands attention immediately. That um, that there there's an unforeseen thing that happens, but it can be other things that, like the waste hauler is a, is not unforeseen, um, but that was not planned for early on. I hope that explains it, Alicia. Um, yeah, maybe, that maybe. is helpful. I just wasn't under sure if you were, I wasn't sure if you were saying that that is like a specific criteria that we're looking for in terms of making these decisions, um, because I kind of had the same question along the lines of what Mandy Joe said in terms of like, how are we making these decisions and how are we deciding which things are being bumped to the front? And so that kind of helps me to understand mm -hmm. that. Um, and then my other question or like my perspective here in terms of funding for the schools is I understand we're saying like we do not have capacity, but like it seems like we might have capacity right now to address some of the very pressing issues that our school has. It seems like we do in terms of funding have some capacity and decision-making potential that would affect the schools for better or for keeping it in the same position that it's in right now. Um, and I know that we have talked about this at length in the past in terms of not wanting to set precedent for this to become an ongoing thing where we are using one-time funds to address, to address costs that are ongoing. But I also think that we are in a very particular 
position in terms of funding and budgeting with all of these capital projects starting and all of our crunches in our budgets and our operation costs that we're going to need to start to think about some possibly creative different ways to fund the things that our town needs to, mm -hmm. to see happening. And I think we're going to need to start doing things that we haven't done in the past. Um, and so I, I don't want to rule this out as something we're not going to seriously consider because our, our schools and our students and our teachers, they're suffering. And it's, it's not good that we have extra funding and we're not even going to consider using this funding to address some of the things that we know we can address, even if it's a one-time thing and we're just buying some more time to figure out a long-term solution. Like, I don't think we should completely rule those things out. Um, and so I would like to continue to have this discussion about how we can support our schools and if there's any way that we can do that using this funding for this year, that makes sense. Um, and I think that that's going to be a very long conversation. And so I'm not sure if we want to continue to hash that out right now. Um, and so, Bob, maybe this is also a question for you. Like, can we have this as a separate agenda item where we discuss this more in length? Well, yeah, I mean, it, it really falls under the budget guidelines uh, that we 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 uh, have on our agenda this time. But we don't, we're running out of time. We're out of time. Um, so I don't think we can get to them this year, but, um, or this, this day, um, with, with respect to the budget guidelines discussion, um, Councillor Haneke raised, uh, a number of questions, uh, to me, um, in, in advance of this meeting regarding how we <coughs> calculate operating expenses really is what it comes down to for the town, the library, the elementary school versus the regional schools. And we may not be calculating it correctly for or fairly for the regional schools. And I think that's that needs to be discussed as well under the guidelines. Mm -hmm. So uh, can I suggest that we, you know, I don't know whether we, I'm not sure that there's consensus uh, on <clears throat> what to do with the uh, the, the free cash allocations right now uh, without having this other discussion of of um, <clears throat> really the the guide the budget guidelines and what we think we should be doing uh, in order to fund the four entities of of uh, that we fund um, so I'm, I'm leave it up to the committee to decide what they want to do but I don't know that we have <clears throat> a way forward right now Paul, did you want to? I just have to say, I, I have to exit the meeting now. It's just, okay. I've been waiting 20 minutes, so I've gone a little bit longer. So thank you. And Mel Melissa and Holly are here. Okay. Thanks. So I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, as I said, we're, we're, we're way over time at this point. And um, I'm not sure that we're, we're, we have a real path forward yet. <laughs> uh, Councillor Haneke? So I think we need to postpone voting recommendations on the financial orders at least a week. Um, maybe till after the hearing, frankly, and maybe we can get more information about how much waste hauler would actually need to get to RFP instead of us just estimating. Um, but I think we should prioritize a financial, a budget guideline discussion next at next week's meeting, that that should be our first one, because I think a lot of these questions go into that and would help us make recommendations on the financial orders that have been referred to us too. But yeah, I'm not sure we should start that discussion today, even though I'd love to, um, but because we're running out of time for the financial guidelines. But I think we need to start with it at next week's meeting. I agree. Holly, did you have something? Um, yes, I was going to say two things. And um, I think that uh, Alicia um, just about answered one of the questions herself in her uh, last comment is free cash is one-time funds. And it is the town's policy to use one-time funds for one-time expenses to not use them for ongoing expenses. So that is why they typically are earmarked more towards capital projects because they are one-time expenses. Um, and and she she sort of 
stated exactly that in her comment. Um, and the other thing that I just wanted to point out is we missed the fourth quarter report on the agenda. So I didn't know if that's something that you wanted me to review or if you folks wanted to um, take a look at it and we can review it at the next um, finance committee meeting because it, unfortunately, I was working on it until very close to the end of the day yesterday trying to get it um, together. So um, it it came out late, but I just wanted to point out that we did miss that and whether you want to um, have that discussion today or postpone that to the next week as well when people have more time to look at it. I just wanted to mention that. Yeah, we, we need to postpone that because okay. I, I haven't had a chance to look at it. So, And I don't think most members of the committee have had a chance to look at it. I know, Kathy, you have, but... Kathy? Yeah, I, yeah, so I just, I'm going to respond to two things because we're running over. Um, Mandy asked, and I would support, can we postpone a decision on this? You know, I think we've, we we have pieces of it we're, we're all in favor of. And then we have this, what to do about waste hauler and whether there's a charter piece and Alicia's question on, is there something? So mine would be on how urgent is the sixth grade? You know, is, is there any other piece? So my my hand went up because I think it's urgent that we make the guidelines be the center of next week. And I don't know whether you can post it for a two and a half hour meeting, Bob. I'm will I'm willing to do that. Okay. And, well, and my my second comment is Holly, what you just sent to us on fourth quarter was such a gift. So I really recommend everyone read it because it has a lot more information than we've than we've received in the past on what generated the surplus at a very at a very fine level of um, going down to some line items, but also some past history on surpluses that I think was helpful. So some of these things are a repeating story. And so in that context, Bob, um, maybe I don't know whether we have a quick discussion on fourth quarter results, make it really quick, but have everyone be, that's your homework that really, you know, re read it carefully. And last year's fourth quarter, maybe we could post it because Holly, a couple of them were repeated like on the much higher revenues from um, earnings on investment was also a reason for last year. You know, some things this year were unique to this year. Um, no finance director for most of the year, <laughs> um, but but if, uh, unable to hire firefighters, you know, down on the expense line. But it was so that's so my suggestion is do it quickly next time and really come everyone come in with thoughts about the guidelines, including that there's one pot of money, you know, so that, that we don't have more money just because we want to move it around. Um, so trying to think of if we moved it around a little bit, um, I'm ready to have a discussion of not doing the things the way we've done it in the past. But I just, so my thought was two and a half hours, make guidelines the center. Everyone should read the fourth quarter and send any questions in and try to, by the end of the next meeting, have some kernels of where we agree that we might put these in guidelines or at least identify where there are areas of disagreement about the guidelines. So. Okay. I, I agree. Alicia. Um, I also, I just have to leave now, but I did just want to say that I would, I would be available to do a two and a half hour meeting next week. If we just add the half hour on the later end of the meeting, like I can't come earlier to the meeting. Um, but I could stay later next week. Um, so I just wanted to say that if that is the decision we're going to make, that that works for me. Um, and I agree with most of what Kathy just said, but I do have to leave now. Okay. Um, Rob, is it not true that the um, next week's meeting starts at 10, correct? Right, that's correct. Okay. And if I get a sense on this, and we had to bump it up to them because the <clears> school <throat> building, it might be that we only have a half hour meeting. So let me just double you know, we're in this limbo land on school where we have to pay, we have to pay invoices, but we don't have an update on the attorney general on that moving forward. But it, that may be too much to say that we could start at a half hour earlier. Well, Alicia said that she can't make it a half hour earlier, so. Okay. So I think let's, let's stick with 10 o'clock, but if we can just kind of go into the, the lunch hour. Uh, <laughs> 
I think uh, I, I agree. We're going to need two and a half hours because we spent two and a half hours today just talking <laughs> about <laughs> what so far. So, Bernie? Uh, free cash is always a mystery. And I want to thank Holly for uh, making it just a little bit more uh, less mysterious. And, and I think it's important that we understand where the sources are of from free cash and how that um, free cash is essentially unreliable. Uh, and uh, if we take that and get a better understanding of that and then move into the guidelines, uh, I think we'll be all better off for it. So uh, I just want to acknowledge her good work. Okay. So I think uh, we have a consensus that we should adjourn and not vote uh, on a recommendation on the uh, finance orders. So I'll take uh, any, uh, I'll take a motion. Uh, Tali, did you want to say something? Um, I was just going to say, you, you did take a, a stand on the rescission, the debt rescission. So those ones will be forwarded to town council with your recommendation. The other ones are all on hold at this point. I just wanted to clarify. That's correct. Okay, yes. thank you. Yeah, the rescissions, I will, I will, I will send a, a, a note. I'll type up a result of today's meeting and send it around, but I will send it to the council as a recommendation. Thank you. Uh, we can also make it clear that there's no doubt on the cannabis one and on the opioid. You know, those are, you know, in terms of those get out, you know, whether we're voting on the whole set of them, but there's not, that's not where the discussion was on this. Right, right. Yeah, I, I, and yeah, I, I will, I will clarify. I'll clarify that. Councilor Haneke? The council actually adopted the rescission order on Monday. We didn't refer it to the committee. Oh. The motion was to adopt. Oh, so, well, right. we don't even have to recommend it then. <laughs> Sorry, but. I mean, Sorry. I would recommend that Holly talk to Athena and confirm that, but the motion sheet was to adopt the rescission order. It was not a referral. I thought they were all referred. Um, it says, okay. but what I have on the motion sheet was to adopt council order FY 2513 rescinding authorized but unissued bonds as shown on page eight of the motion sheet. So confirm that with, with the clerk, our clerk, but I'm pretty sure we adopted it, not refer it. Okay. I'll look into it. Like I said, it's just a housekeeping thing for me and the as many of those I can get out of the way early, I prefer to. Thank you. And thanks uh, for pointing that out, uh, Councilor Haneke. Uh, my mind is a blank <laughs> when it comes to <laughs> late late council meetings. <laughs> um, okay, so I do. I do. I have a motion to adjourn. Yes, moved. Okay. Second. Second. okay. Uh, I vote aye. Kathy. Yes. Uh, Councilor Haneke. Aye. Andy. Yes. Yes. Bernie. Support with great enthusiasm. <laughs> okay. Thanks, everybody. Um, and uh, sorry we had to, we got went so long, but I think we had a very, very productive discussion. So we'll uh, meet again next week. Have a good weekend.